through the eyes of a traveler. Welcome one, welcome all. Welcome to part four of my road trip to the mystical, magical, wonderful Turkey. Before I begin, let me just ask Donald and Daffy if it's okay for me to record them. Is it okay, folks? Yes, they've said I'm good to go. So where am I? Well, from what I'm about to show you, which is some artwork, you will never guess. Or maybe you will. But that artwork should tell you something. This artwork may not. But this place, yes, this place should tell you clearly where I am. I'm in a place known as Balloon City, but the proper name is Cappadocia. So this place is known for its fairy-like chimneys and the cave dwellings that are in abundance. In fact, if I hadn't booked a hotel and I was in the camping spirit, I'm pretty sure I could find a cave to dwell in, to stay in for the duration of my stay. Anyway, let's get back to Cappadocia, uh, an arid land, um, vast land, lots of mountains, lots of caves, lots to explore. If you feel like doing something a little more adventurous uh, and the pocket gives you permission, there are balloon companies that take you out in the morning and you have a little drink or something in terms of a breakfast. It often costs in excess of $250. So it isn't something that your backpacker possibly could afford, but it's certainly worth getting out in the morning and watching all the balloons out of the sky. In fact, I'll share a video of this uh, in more detail. Right, what else? Well, it's a UNESCO site. In 1985, UNESCO gave this that status. And basically, it's a beautiful area to enjoy, to hike, to explore, to simply enjoy horse riding, quad biking, motorcycling, lots to do in Cappadocia and of course let's not forget the balloon rides cool cave with an echo that makes me sound like a dreaded nightmare. Candyman, Candyman, Candyman. Jesting aside, this is a very peaceful and tranquil place. Other than my silliness, this is quiet, peaceful, and it makes you think, it makes you think of all the new wonders of the world. These fairy-like chimneys have occurred through rainfall and natural erosion. And if time permits, I will show you other structures which look like camels and other animals um, in due course. The 
caves have now been boarded up somewhat. I'm not sure if that's because this is known as Pigeon Valley and pigeons often flock here, but it could be that they are seen as a pestilence in terms of what they do to the crop. And so uh, normally there'd be thousands upon thousands of pigeons here, but it seems as though it's pigeon free with the odd one or two flying around. So I guess, I guess farmers have the right. So this is called Love Valley. I'm not sure why. I can see what, why they've called it Love Valley since doing something to it and that is adding some romantic carts and love hearts and places where one can take pictures of their loved ones. Artifacts looked a little, look a little dishevelled, but still I can see the benefit of having these to attract people to this site. But maybe I'm a purist, but I think just looking at this, there's love for this valley. You don't need gimmicks; you just need nature. I'm not sure if you can see in the distance the snow-capped mountain. That would be the mountain that I recorded in part three of my road trip. It's a distance away, um, so if it's not visible, I understand. But like I said before, Turkey is full of wonderment and the need to wander. Right, so you can see the villages down below. I think that village there is Pigeon Valley or the village sitting next to Pigeon Valley and uh, to be honest these these mountains these structures that have been created through erosion and rain and whatnot they're just fascinating it just makes the whole landscape look so much different from anything else I guess that's why it's called Cappadocia so if you feel a little disheveled a little fatigued tired then you have the option of using one of these steeds Camels, horses, donkeys, and mules. Select your choice, but one at a time, of course. <laughs> that, believe it or not, is a castle of a past era. So I'm not sure if the pronunciation is right, but the town below is called Gorame and is deemed by most as the center of Cappadocia. It's very quiet. It's probably because of COVID, I'm pretty sure it is. And also, uh, when I arrived in Turkey, Turkey went into full lockdown. But the president was kind enough to say that tourists can still continue to travel. How kind of him, how nice of him. Thank you. Dalton's Brothers Ranch. I thought I'd take a picture of this, or a video rather, uh, because it's a lovely ranch with a wonderful backdrop of caves and beautiful structures. Again, a great place to camp. Shh, don't tell anyone. This is Rose Valley, and I recollect many decades back when I came here, and literally there were roses. I think the roses have disappeared since. Uh, this was um, it wasn't arable land, it was more, how can I put it, it was, uh, you had a small path that went through the valley. Um, I remember somebody selling orange juice and um, somewhere in the middle and you, you felt you needed that orange juice for uh, energy. But now it's arable land and uh, no roses, but still called Rose Valley. Minaret of a mosque. A very old mosque, but even older still is the castle. This is the second castle of Cappadocia, the smaller of the two. I would pronounce it, but I know I'm making an error. So this is Nevisar Castle, 
Kaya Ser. Kaya Ser. Never Ser. We'll see what it looks like when we get up there. So this is the castle. There's not much of a building, but uh, let's uh, go up to the castle wall and see what we can see from up above. You can see as far as, well, as far as the last town of Cappadocia, really, village even. I have never ever felt anything but hospitality and warmth from this country. So here's an interesting find, a cannon from Britain, my country. Now I'm not sure if this was a gift to the Turkish or it was used against the Turkish people in some historical war. And now it's kept here as, as a decorative piece of armament. Hmm. Hello. I guess people lived here in the hope that if somebody, not in the hope, in the fear that if somebody did try to approach them, attack them, they had elevation. And so uh, a lot of the caves would be high up and they would have rope ladders and pull them up so nobody could get to them, have a stock of stones which they would use as a weapon to deter people from entering their homes. There are so many places in Turkey where it's just vast and isolated and I'm going to confess to really enjoying those kind of places. Time for me to bid you goodbye. Before I go, let me share a few pictures and offer you a gratitude of thanks for watching the video, supporting my channel. I hope that you all are happy, positive and smiling wherever you may be. And for those that are on two wheels, please ride safely remember there are people at home that pray for your safe return so you have all the fun and they have all the pressure the worry the fear god bless us all god bless you <laughs>